Hi everyone, welcome to these Python tutorials where we are focusing a bit more on image processing tasks. And we have been talking about deep learning for the last few videos, so I definitely recommend you to watch the last dozen or more videos where we talked about the basic terminology that gets used in deep learning and understood uh, those terminology at a uh, certain depth. And uh, I definitely recommend you to watch the previous video, tutorial number 111, uh, where we talked about multi-class classification. And this is definitely a follow-up to that video where I promised to talk about top K accuracy. So watching that is almost a requirement. Now, uh, again, when we talk about multi-class classification, we are trying to classify a given image, in this case, into one of the 10 classes, right? Into one of N number of classes. Now, top accuracy, when you actually uh, predict the accuracy, when you print out the accuracy, typically, it's it's the prediction, uh, the top prediction. So if you have if you have an aeroplane, is this classified as aeroplane? If so, then it is uh, a correct prediction. If not, it's a wrong prediction. Top five accuracy basically means, is my prediction in the top five predictions? Yes, I know this is wrong prediction, but is it at least in the top two or top three? Uh, top five is a common term that people use. That's why I'm saying top five accuracy. Especially it makes sense if you have like 50, 60 categories, right? If you have 60 different categories, is my uh, how is my model doing? Is my uh, prediction at least in the top five, if not, you know, the top? So that's the that's the uh, you know quick summary of what top five is. And let me show you how to implement this. It's very easy, very easy because someone else already did a great job in providing us the library that we can use. So let's jump into Google Colab and work on the same code that we have worked on uh, in the last tutorial. So again, please do watch that first and then jump onto this one. So let's jump into Colab now. Okay, again, I'll share this code uh, with you, although the only difference between the last video, the code from the last video and this one is a couple of lines, but again, that's also important. So I'm not gonna describe any of these. We know what we are looking at. So let's go ahead and import the libraries. These are the required libraries. Again, I reset the entire, uh, entire runtime, so we are running everything from scratch, which means including downloading our uh, data set, all 60,000 images, 50,000 for training, and 10,000 for testing. So let's go down and oh, it got stuck somewhere. Okay, there you go, 50,000 and 10,000. So you can view a few of these images. And again, this is the thing, that, this is exactly what we have done the last time. Let's go ahead and divide our pixel values uh, by 255. So, so it's like normalizing or scaling. And, uh, and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So. A few white train values, 694, and uh, let's go ahead and convert that to categorical, which means we are just converting our six into a bunch of zeros and then one where we see the sixth position, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six at the sixth. At the ninth position, you have one for this, and at the fourth, you have. This is basically converting your, uh, your y values into categorical values, that's it. Again, there is a video for that, so please go back and watch that. Here is where we added a new, new, a couple of new lines. So let's look at this. In keras.metrics, you import top k categorical accuracy, and you can define your k. I defined the k here as five. That's why I call this top five accuracy. You can define this as three, five, ten, whatever uh, k you want. So. Uh, I'm just defining a function. Why am I doing that? Because I would like to track the top K categorical accuracy while the model is tr uh, training. You know how we track accuracy? I also want to track uh, top K accuracy. And you can track multiple metrics as you're training. And we'll, we'll, uh, I'll show that to you in a minute. So uh, I'm defining a function called top five categorical accuracy, which takes two parameters, Y true and Y prediction, okay? And all it's going to return is uh, applying this onto my y true y prediction with the k value equals to five. It's pretty simple. So how do I use this as part of the model? So let's run this, just a function. As part of the model, you know, we talked about all of this last time. The only thing I changed is, as part of my metrics, instead, in addition to accuracy, I'm also tracking top five categorical accuracy. So when uh, you when you call the metrics, uh, you know, it's going to return two things accuracy and top five categorical accuracy. That's pretty much it. So let's run this. Uh, now we are basically defining the model. It's going to print the model summary. And there you go. 
nothing this is exactly same as last video now this is also same as the last uh, from the last video where we are defining a callback for early stopping and uh, with a patience of 10 okay uh, it's not going to matter because for this experiment let's only run 10 epochs so so we can see the effect of top five accurate uh, you know uh, top five accuracy there okay all we need to do is fit the model so while it's doing let's let me explain there are only two things we changed uh, one define what top k accuracy is as a function and then i gave that function as a metric that this needs to track in addition to accuracy that's it this accuracy is top one accuracy this is top five that's it okay now let's come back and did it start training where is it okay it hasn't started yet but uh, it'll start any second the reason i'm waiting is i want to show you that while training it's going to print out the top five accuracy obviously the top five accuracy is going to be much higher than the actual accuracy right top five is is my answer is my prediction in the top five that's that's pretty much it so if i slide this here you can see after the first epoch my top five accuracy is already 91.6 percent whereas my uh, accuracy is 45 percent okay this actually makes even more sense if you have uh, many many categories like if you're trying to classify something into uh, 50 or 60 different classes then top five can actually uh, make uh, uh, make a meaningful metric so let me go ahead and pause this for now i know it's only five more epochs but why waste time okay so it's done and now let's look at model.evaluate and look at the top five accuracy and remember one thing in the last video we looked at uh, we we extracted let's uh let's do this something of this sort right uh we didn't do anything with the loss and we only used accuracy and uh, we did not put anything here. In fact, if you do that, then uh, if you do that and run this, it's going to throw an error after it's done the calculation saying that, hey, too many values to unpack, expected to. That basically means it's, it's unpacking loss, right? These are the ones that we are tracking and it's also unpacking another one, uh, sorry, top five accuracy. So. When you run model.evaluate, it's going to unpack the loss and also whatever metrics that you are trying to uh, track. So we are getting all those three here and let's go ahead and print all those three. And I'm multiplying my accuracy by 100 and top five accuracy by 100 so we can see these as a percentage. So let's run this one more time. And uh, loss, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, I, I know my loss right there is 98.47, right? Uh, but our accuracy is 65.34 after 10 epochs, but my top five accuracy is 97%. That tells me even after five epochs, I'm getting 97% accuracy on my on my test data. You know, uh, with uh, uh, basically that that's that tells me the model is doing pretty good, and uh, it's uh, only confusing you know with the with the with the images that are very close to each other. That's the inference I get from here. I'll let you try this out on top three accuracy, probably with 10 classes, top three makes more sense, but now you know how to do this. You can include this as part of the training so you can monitor it, you can monitor it as it's going by. You can plot it, right? I mean, we normally plot uh, loss and accuracy, validation accuracy. Now you can actually plot not just accuracy, top five accuracy, and also uh, uh, validation top five accuracy. So you can plot this and then you can see how that evolves. And while we are talking about this, there are other metrics that you can actually include as part of the training. If you are, for example, working on semantic segmentation, which we'll do later on, you can include intersection over union as one of the metrics that you track. And intersection over union is a better metric than accuracy for semantic segmentation. Again, we'll talk about this later on. So you can add any other metrics that you think are useful as part of your training and plot and, and, and study these. So uh, I hope now top five accuracy makes sense. And again, let's continue this, uh, these discussions starting the next video, possibly talk about uh, uh, semantic segmentation and what it is and uh, what are the various ways of uh, you know uh, implementing your own semantic segmentation and all that that's going to be fun so please stay tuned subscribe to this channel and like these videos and let's meet again in the next tutorial